how you doing in this video is a tutorial on how to scan your film negatives at home using a camera you already have um, a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera that has an interchangeable lens a lot of us have cameras already a digital camera um, and the beautiful thing about that is that if you have a digital camera all you need to do is get a macro lens a light table, a film holder, and you can start scanning film at home. It's really that easy. So, this is what my camera looks like. I have a Sony a7 II. Uh, that's not really relevant. You could use any camera. Um, and I have a Sigma 70 millimeter 2.8 macro lens. With this, I'm able, with the macro lens, I'm able to get really close to the film negative, and I could actually make a photo and I can have that photo on my card, I can upload it to my computer, and then I can convert the negative into a positive on my computer. And that's really it. That's all what film scanning is with a camera. Um, but in order to get a proper photo, um, I need to do a few things. First thing I need to do is illuminate the film negative with a source of light. Um, People use different things. Some people use an iPad with a white screen. Some people use a cell phone. Um, you can use different things in order to get your source of light. It doesn't have to be anything in particular, but I use um, a light table, like this one right here. This costs me like $25 or so. Um, they range in price, but to get a basic one, it's about $20, it's not that much money. Um, what this does, as I said, is it illuminates your film negative so that you can get a proper photo. And that's what you need to get a proper photo. Um, however, an important aspect of getting that photo is to keep your film flat. To keep your film flat, you need a film holder most of the time, almost all, all the time, really. Every time you need a film holder. Um, you can't really do this without one. So I use a film holder that's actually meant for a flatbed scanner, but it works all the same. And um, yeah, this is pretty good. It's by Digitiza, it's the company Digitiza. I have one for 35 millimeter film and I have another one for 120 millimeter film. Um, however, recently I upgraded my film holder and I got the essential film holder, which makes the whole process a little easier. I can just slide it through, then pull it through, and it actually blocks off ambient light, which I'll talk about later. But I would recommend, if you're starting off and you're getting your equipment and you don't already have a film holder, I would just buy one of these, the Essential Film Holder, or one of the competitor companies, uh, film holders. Um, they're about perhaps $40 to $50, but they do come from the UK, so you have to pay for that shipping tax, the shipping fee. But yeah, that's all you need to get started. Um, wait, one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. You need a tripod in order to mount your camera and point it directly down towards your film in order for you to get a flat image. So that's all you need. I think the biggest expense is actually the macro lens. Um, for me, I invested in a brand new macro lens, which I use for film scanning and other things, but an alternative is getting a vintage lens, a vintage macro lens. Um, Here's one of those, and what you can do is put an adapter onto the back and um, attach it to your camera. Um, a lot of people use that route to save money because the whole point is really to save money so you don't have to buy a dedicated flatbed scanner. Additionally, DSLR scanning is um, beneficial because it's a faster way of scanning. Uh, with a dedicated flatbed scanner, you have to literally wait as the machine slowly scans your film. Whereas with DSLR scanning, 
all you have to do is just press the button to take the photo and you have your scan. Um, a dedicated flatbed scanner is basically a big sensor. Um, a sensor is what is registering uh, the photo, it's taking the photo. It's just a big sensor that's dedicated to scanning documents as well as film. But a camera is also a sensor. And if you just arrange it in the right way, you're going to get the same capacity as a flatbed scanner. Um, perhaps even with better quality because some of the digital sensors on mirrorless and DSLR scanners are actually more updated scanners and they have a better color reproduction and um, better resolution than a flatbed scanner. So, yeah, that's all you need. Macro lens, a light table, film holder, and a tripod. So, let's get to scanning. So, when you're set up, this is how it looks. You have the tripod keeping the camera firm, pointing straight down, right onto the film negative. We have some 120 film here, and this looks like a photo of the train tracks. So you want to get as close as possible to the film uh, to make sure you get the whole thing within your composition. But uh, we don't want to get too far back where you don't get as much detail. So get as close as possible to get the detail, but also allowing all of the film in, in, the, in the system. Um, so the thing that can mess up your your scanning, the photo you will take, is actually the ambient light coming off of the light table, coming off of my light source, um, coming from the room, and getting into the photo. It will be noticeable uh, for sure, especially if the photo is like of a darker scene. You will see that light coming onto the sides. So what I do to prevent this is actually I get a piece of cardboard and I put it alongside where the light is leaking through away from the negative and I block off this light. Additionally, I try to like steer off any light that's in the room away. So oftentimes I actually turn off the lights or keep the, keep the room dim. And uh, this will be my only source of light right here. Therefore, we're not getting light coming onto the lens. Okay, so when we're taking the photo, we're all set up, we're ready to go, and we're about to take the photo. Here are two things to keep in mind. You want to illumin el eliminate, sorry, eliminate the amount of noise coming from the camera itself. So that means turning the ISO all the way down to its lowest point. I go to 100 because I'm not sure what these lines mean. So go to the low point. ISO 100 is pretty good. Um, you also want to reduce camera shake. So... What that means for me is setting a self timer to two seconds. So when I take the photo, it will wait two seconds, reduce any shake from me actually pressing the button and that photo will be taken. Um, you also want to make sure you get a focused uh, shot. So aperture F.3.5 is not going to cut it. It's a, it might not be sharp enough. So I usually go to nine. Uh, that is probably the sharpest aperture setting you'll get on most lenses. So I go to nine, but you see it's quite dark because we're actually closing down the lens. So uh, what I would do is actually increase the shutter, decrease the shutter speed um, to brighten up the scene. So this is one fifth of a second. I think this is good enough. Let's, you know, let me do one fourth of a second. So now we're all set up, we have the composition, we set our timer, now we have to focus. So if your camera has focus peaking, that's really great. Uh, what you're going to do is focus on the grain. So I'm not sure if you can see that with my camera, but basically I'm looking for the little speckles of grain in the photo. And I'm focusing on that grain. I can see it in her eye. Oh, about there. Yeah. There we go. So we're all set. And once you focus on that grain, it should be consistent throughout the whole roll. So you can actually just pull it along and you'll be good. So here we go. Here's our first shot. We take the photo. 
That's it. Now we move on to the next photo, which is a man that I took a photo of last week. Um, so we set it up. We press our shutter. Wait two seconds. And we got it. Then we move on. Same man drinking coffee. We set it up. Make sure it's it's level. We take our photo. And that's it. That's really the whole process right there. Um, so I have that. I took three shots. I have 12 left because this is a uh, medium format roll. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do 35 right after. So the cool thing about the essential film holder, this is this thing right here, is that uh, it allows you to shoot 120 and 35. And you don't have to actually cut the film uh, before you scan it, which you would have to do with an Epson. So what I do is like I literally just pull it through. I'm trying to do this with one hand. I pull it through. And um, I set things up. And I take a shot. Pull some more through. I'm already, I'm already focused. Just angle it like so. Take a shot, and I keep moving. And these are also, um, this is from a half frame camera, which is pretty cool. I can't wait to see how these look. But yeah, the process is quite simple. We have successfully uploaded our images into Adobe Lightroom, and we can tell that they are quite good because there are no weird flares coming off from the side. If our ambient light was too much and it got into the lens, you'd see flares coming out around here. But thankfully, we don't have that. This is a good scan. So in order to convert this negative into a positive, I use a program called Negative Lab Pro. It's a plugin for Lightroom made by someone who actually wanted to know how to manipulate their photos in Lightroom. So Negative Lab Pro is good for many reasons. If you are manipulating your film images in Lightroom, it's just good to have because it allows you some control over your film negatives. But it's especially helpful if you're scanning your film using a DSLR camera. So it actually knows the source. It knows that it's coming from a digital camera. And there are various color models to choose from. So we can convert a very basic way and it'll just give us a straightforward um, conversion. Or we can choose Frontier and Noritsu. Frontier and Noritsu are actually professional film scanners that you'd find at film labs. And they have specific color models. They have a specific color representation that's kind of unique to those scanners. Frontier is usually a bit flat for my taste. Noritsu pops a bit more. So I, I usually choose Noritsu. There's also black and white, of course. Our saturation is here. You can choose whether you want it low, lowly saturated or a high saturation. I like to just keep the default. Um, and yeah, before we do that though, we actually have to make sure the photo is good to be scanned. It's in a good shape. To do that, we have to shift two things, the color balance and the crop. So in order to shift the color balance to where it's supposed to be, we use the color here of the film strip. This will set a balance appropriately. So I choose the white balance selector, which is right here. I come over to the film strip, I select it, and here we have the color we're meant to have, the temperature we're meant to have. Next, I crop away the film holder, I crop away the film border, leaving just the image itself. Now we're in a good place to scan the image or to convert the image. So we wait a little while. If you have many photos, this process can take quite a bit, but you can actually select all the images and convert them in one go, which is quite convenient. Cool. So here we have our finished product. We can manipulate it as we want. We can change the brightness, the light, and even the temperature or the tones. So I usually do a lot of changing in here, but if you want to go into Lightroom and actually make changes there, 
you can make a copy of the photo under a TIFF uh, format. TIFF has more data than JPEG, so I usually choose TIFF. You apply that, and it makes a copy that allows you to manipulate in Lightroom. If you try to manipulate in Lightroom from the original photo, since it's an inversion, everything will be opposite. So if you want to go increase your exposure, um, let me show you. If you want to increase your exposure, it'll go darker. It'll decrease your exposure. If you want to increase your highlight, it'll decrease your highlight because everything's opposite. But in the TIFF, you can do so regularly. All right, so let's try one more. What we do is we select our white balance using the film border. We crop everything to where it needs to be. Bam, bam. And then we convert. Let's choose Frontier this time. We wait a moment. Again, you can do this all in one go. If you select all the photos that you want to convert, it'll do it all in one go. But I'm just showing you individually. Wonderful. And from here, you can bring the border back if you want. If you like the border, you can bring it back. Yeah, and here we go. This is a successfully converted scan. We took an image from the film negative, we put it onto our digital camera, we brought it into Lightroom, and here we have it. We have the final result just as you would have with a, uh, a film lab. In fact, you probably have better resolution because a lot of digital cameras have better resolution than a lot of film lab scanners um, that are standard. But yeah, that's all. If you have any more questions, uh, feel free to DM me on Instagram or send me a message on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. And I can't wait to see what you make.